First Peter chapter five. Not that we haven't read this before. Hallelujah. says, whatever you sow, you reap. He who sows to the flesh reaps corruption, and he who sows to the spirit reaps life. So there's got to come a point of reality that we reach, that we're doing things not because we have to, but because we want to. In other words, when we first start out in something, we, we do things because we know it's beneficial to us. Many times when we first start praising and worshiping, many people just don't feel like it. And they allow their flesh. And the reason why they allow their flesh in the beginning not to participate is because they're not strong enough. They're weak in spirit. Very weak. People have a hard time praying in tongues. They got to wait for a while because they're weak. They lack. They lack being filled with the Spirit. They lack feeding their spirit. Or they just don't stink and believe. And so they do the ritual. People sing the words, but really don't mean it. There's really no heart sung. It's just, okay. That's not sowing in the Spirit. Amen. Sowing in the Spirit means you are flowing with the Spirit and you carry the heart of God, the heart of Christ that says, I love you. This is why I do what I do. I want to show you that I love you. What other greater way can you show God that you love Him than to worship Him? The second way is obedience. <laughs> but if you can't worship Him, how can you obey Him? It's impossible. In verse 5, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. For God resists the what? Proud. Proud. But he gives grace to the humble. The grace, again, is not unmerited favor. It is a plan to escape. Everybody get it? You don't get the plan to escape. You don't escape. You don't cooperate with the plan of escape. You do not escape. I don't care how good of a person you think you are. Those are the ones that stand before the Lord and they proclaim all the things they've done. And he says, I don't know you. Why? Because you're full of pride. You've done things your way, not mine. Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. Humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. Let me tell you, when we get together, we're under the mighty hand of God. It's a prime opportunity to humble yourself. Because if you can't do it in here, you can't do it anywhere else. Then you're just full of stinky religion. I don't care if you can quote every scripture in the Bible. You're lost. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion because he's got a big mouth and he's seeking whom he can deceive, who he can distract, who he can mislead. That's his job and he does it very well. And people give into it so easy. Resist him, verse 9, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings or the distractions are experienced by everyone in the world and all your brethren. Everyone gets attempted, gets... Uh, uh, attacked in temptations and distractions. Everyone. But 
But may the God of all grace, who called us to what? His eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. After you've suffered a while. You know, submission is suffering. Because it's a place where you're denying yourself. After you've finally given up and quit fighting for your life and surrendering it. After you've suffered a while, then you can be perfected, established, strengthened, and you can become settled. When you're settled, everything just moves. Amen. Flows freely. You don't even have to think about it. You do it because you're in love with the one who created you. It's no longer a religious act. It's no longer thinking about, gosh, maybe I better do it because everyone else is. You do it because you love them. See, there's a place of being it, saying you love someone and in love with someone. It's two different things. I hear people say, I love this, I love that, and I love you. Some people say they love you, and there's no difference than loving a nice-looking car. It's no difference. They say they love you, but they really don't. Because the love of God is what's the difference. That's the love of God. It's different. In this arena, in this time and season that we are in, and because there is so much distraction in every area, and there's so many people that have picked up so many, dis I want to say, waves of distractions, there's got to be a place where you and I finally make a decision to do, not only do whatever it takes, because see, many people say they do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. But many really don't. Because they're just doing it to please, to get something. Or they're doing it to satisfy something. And they're doing it to self-justify themselves. But actually, they're not willing to do whatever it takes. Because if a person's willing to do whatever it takes, they don't need to look around the room. They need to look at him. They need to seek him and grope after him. Because there's, no, there's not a reality then that he is the life. And without him, we are nothing. Nothing at all. And without being connected to him, we go right back to the old. It's just a matter of sometimes moments and sometimes weeks. He says, humble yourself. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He makes the way of escape. You know, the world is trying to escape, and they don't even know it. You and I were at a point where we wanted to escape. We wanted to escape our fears. We wanted to escape jail, prison. We wanted to escape our debts. We wanted to escape our addictions. We wanted to escape all kinds of things that were taking us and holding us in a bondage. And at that point in time, we were humbled. I'll do whatever it takes. And then it's just a matter of time when we didn't maintain that attitude. And we began to drift. We began to touch and agree with things. We began to allow pride get back in. Then we were more concerned about our shoes during worship, our nails during worship, our hair during worship, our clothes. Gosh, what if I sweat? <laughs> That's promoting self, not denying self. Those are limitations that the devil puts on people. And if they haven't recognized it yet, they're in trouble. Humble yourself. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. There is a time when you and I must make humble adjustments. Humble adjustments. Humble is humility. Humility is an act of being humble. To be humble is an act of denying yourself. 
It's an act of denying your way. And it's an act of denying your pride. It's a place where you and I release control. It is an adjustment that pleases God. Every humble adjustment is an adjustment that pleases God. We run into them every time. Every time you have to make a decision, it's either going to be a humble adjustment or a prideful one. To be humble is, is an act of surrender to the character of Christ. Yet humility defiles <laughs> the human nature because the human nature is pure pride. Amen. See, so when you're willing to be humble, you're able to defile the human nature. There's many who are in, live in a life of false humility, humbling to corruption and deception, false deities and idols, and the number one idol is self. Every moment and every day we make humble adjustments. The purpose to make a humble adjustment is an adjustment that pleases God, not ourselves. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. <clears throat> In verse twenty. Humble adjustments. Let's speak it. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also Wood and clay. Some for what? Honor. honor and some for what? Dishonor. Dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, which is the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, and love. Peace with those who call on of the Lord were they what? Pure heart. And avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle, able to teach and patient in what? Humility. Correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and what? Escape. The snare of the devil and having been taken captive to do the will of the devil. So he's saying cleansing ourselves from the old nature of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. We can become a vessel of honor. Why? Because then we get to a place we are carrying a humble attitude. A humble attitude. So those who are vessels of honor carry a humble attitude. Those who are vessels of dishonor carry a prideful attitude. But God gives the opportunity to an individual to repent or turn from the way of sin, which is the presence of evil, and hope that that person will escape the snares of the devil. Repentance is an act of humility or humbleness. Again, it is to escape the hold of a corruptible, from a corruptible world due to the will, uh, will of the enemy. We live in a corruptible world. 
The earth is corrupted. Everything is corrupted. The only thing that maintains righteousness is the body of Christ and Jesus being the head. Everything else is corrupted. And many people are so caught up in the world that they've been taken captive. And don't even, some of them don't even know it. Some people are still going to church and still are captives to the devil. Oh, they can quote it, they can speak it, and they can even act it. But they can't maintain it. Psalm 18. Humble adjustments. Psalm 18, verse 25. <clears throat> Psalm 18, verse 25. He says, with the merciful you show yourself merciful. With the humble man, you show yourself, I mean, with the blameless man, you show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. With the devious, you show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people. Wow. Humble is a sight, uh, an act of submission. You will save the humble people but will bring down the haughty looks. Again, to be humble was a place of rescue. That's how you and I first started the rescue. Was we had to become humble. We hit enough walls of reality. So he saves the humble and he rejects the proud. Psalm 25. Even when you and I were rescued, we still were reaping the things we've sowed. It just stopped. Now we must sow to outrun the reaping due to us. The more you sow, the more you outrun it. The less you sow, the more it can come on and overtake you still. In verse 8, 25. Uh, I'm uh, eight. What did I say? To go? Twenty-five, eight. Yeah. Okay. Let's speak it. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, He teaches sinners the way. The humble He guides in justice, and the humble He what teaches His way. So there's a difference between teaching the way and teaching His way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. It's impossible to keep the covenant with the Lord in a prideful state of life. It's impossible. Only the humble keep covenant. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is a man that fears the Lord? Fears reverence, honor, and respect. That's called humble. Fear is the same, fear of the Lord is the same thing as being humble. It is a parallel to it. If you're not humble, you don't fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you can't be humble. Some people just fear the Lord because of the terror, knowing what can happen. Because he always warns us. Unless you give me the glory, I'll tear you in pieces. Snap. People kind of cover all that stuff over. He's a righteous and justice God. He's merciful but I wouldn't want to be under his wrath. Verse 12 again. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him he shall teach in the way he chooses. Who chooses? The Lord. In other words, he's going to assist your decisions so that they are humble adjustments. Look at this. He himself shall dwell in what? Prosperity. Prosperity. And his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. 
and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net which the enemy snares. Humble he guides into justice, teaches his ways, corrects their choices, because those are called humble adjustments. He brings them prosperity. They fear and reverence and honor and respect him because they walk in a state of humility. Fear, the fear of the Lord, is the highest level of humility. It is the highest level of humility. It's called the, be act of, the act of becoming humble. God looks for the humble. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 12, the highest level of humility is called fear, fear of the Lord. Can you trust him? If you can't trust him, he can't trust you. <laughs> In verse 12, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Why? Because he's full of pride. No temptation is overtaking you except, except for as <clears throat> such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to what? Bear. Bear. Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? <coughs> Idolatry. He makes a way of escape for the humble and everything. Psalm 147. So what you're going to have to do is make a humble adjustment. Psalm 147. Oh, happy day. In verse 5. Is everybody there? Oh, yes. Psalm 147, verse 5. Let's speak it. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. What, what's he trying to show? That's how you become humble. Sing praises on the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beasts its food and to the young ravens that cry. He does not delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in legs of man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who what? Fear him. In other words, he's saying he doesn't take the pleasure in the strength of a man. But he takes the pleasure in those who reverence him, honor him, and respect him. The highest level of humility. And those who hope in his mercy. He lifts up the humble. And Luke 18. Humble adjustments. You and I run across them every day. When somebody offends you, you're going to make the humble adjustment or the prideful one? Hallelujah. Luke 18. <laughs> Luke 18 and verse 9. Everybody there? 
Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And he gave the example. He said, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like the other man or men extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes and offerings and all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. I love that one. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful. Never justify yourself by works. Never justify yourself by deeds. Never justify yourself by accomplishes. Never justify yourself by longevity. We have all fallen short. Just make a humble adjustment and align yourselves with the word of truth and the attitude of Christ Jesus. Amen? God is not interested. As I shared before, a lot of people come to the Lord, oh, I'm your humble servant. Oh, puke. That person's prideful. If you've got to tell God you're humble, you're full of pride. Amongst other things. Romans 12. Humble adjustments. We are in a time and season where there's going to be a lot of humble adjustments. Why? Because judgment's in the house. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly, affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Well, this is my opinion. Who cares? Keep your opinion to yourself. Only speak the things of God. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place for wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Praise God. And do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's called, these are humble adjustments. <laughs> Philippians 2. Some of us need to read those quite a few times. Philippians 2. Remember, we have been taken out of the world into an eternal world. We must learn to live in that realm to stay there. And we must learn to recognize the strategies of the enemy to keep us back or bring us back into the world of corruption. 
Your battle every single day is to sever ourselves from the corruptive world. We are influenced and hard pressed on every side every single day. This world is corrupt. It's ruled by a corrupt individual called Satan and his kingdom. But Jesus came to make a way of escape. Every one of us, since the time you've been born, don't want to know why are we here? Who am I? Where am I going? And how do I escape this place? We live the life of the desire to escape. And when Jesus granted it, because mercy says, I'm crying out to you. When you cry out for mercy, what you're asking him to do is consider you. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy. What are you asking him to do? Consider you. When he answers you, he answers you with grace, which is a plan to escape. The problem is, is God has answered so many people with the plan of escape, but they rejected it. They rejected it. And then they wonder why they go back in that same old cycle again. Because they've opened themselves up to pride. That's the world. You and I are not of the world anymore. We should hate the things that promote evil. We should hate everything that does not promote Christ. Anything. We don't hate people. We hate the demons. We hate the fruits. We hate the acts. We hate sin. We should hate those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Romans 12, 9. Oh, Philippians 2. Sorry. Thank you. I'll make that humble adjustment. <laughs> Did you read Humble Pie? It's delicious. <laughs> Verse 5. I'm going to take that way of escape. <laughs> Philippians 2 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider Robert to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself. Can you imagine God humbling himself? It's kind of hard to comprehend it, you know. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Wow. Obedience to completion. Obedience to completion is going to take humility. Even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Powerful. Humble to obedience, obedience to completion. James chapter 4. Actually, you know what? I want to go a little further. Let's go to verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear, Fear and trembling. That means Humility. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault and in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you should shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. 
Again, the fear of the Lord is the highest level of humility. It's going to take humility to become obedient. And it's going to take obedience to complete. So we go from obedience to completion in everything we do. It's obedience to complete, obedience to complete. If you can't be humble, you can't become obedient. Then you can't complete. James 4. Is everybody okay? Humble adjustments. How many did you have to make before you got here today? You had to get up, right? <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> you didn't allow your feelings to dictate truth. James 4 and verse something, 13. Let's speak. And come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. That's simple enough. If the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, I say that all the time. Sometimes my wife doesn't like it. She goes, I'll see you later. I said, if the Lord wills. <laughs> She goes, you ain't leaving one out me. <laughs> Hallelujah. If the Lord wills, is the willingness to make a humble adjustment. Does everybody understand that? It is the willingness to make a humble adjustment. If the Lord wills. Come on, grab hold of this. Let this be burned in your memory. So when you say, if the Lord wills, what you're saying is, you're willing to make a humble adjustment. If the Lord wills, I'll do this. If the Lord wills, why? Because you are now submitting to an area to where if God is saying, no, you need to make an adjustment, you will. If the Lord wills. Go to the store and buy milk and cookies. If the Lord wills, there could be a humble adjustment there. You never know. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians 3. Now you can make a prideful adjustment also. Because if you're not making a humble adjustment, you are making a prideful adjustment. The word says, acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways and he will establish your steps. Amen? So in this, as we're acknowledging him in everything, we're asking him to establish our steps and our thoughts. Remember, David always said, I set, I've made a decision to set the Lord before me. If I make the decision to set the Lord before me, I'm always looking to him. What do you think? Why? Because I'm willing to make a humble adjustment. So if I'm asking the Lord, what do you think about this or whatever, then what I'm actually saying is, if the Lord wills. Does everybody get it? And if I'm saying, if the Lord wills, then I'm saying I'm willing to make a humble adjustment. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to cooperate with that. Philippians 3.17 Will you have more success? Yes. Will you have more victory? Will you have more joy? 
Well, snap, yes. Verse 17, let's speak it. Brethren, join in, my, in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now I tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Enemies of the cross are not willing to make humble adjustments. 1 John chapter 2. Have you ever done something you didn't want to do? Don't raise your hands. And I don't want to hear what they are. <laughs> and then after you did it, you were like, gosh, I can't believe I did that. You sure wish you had that opportunity for a humble adjustment. <laughs> but you, did, you didn't. But you know, you can still make that humble adjustment right then and there. Repent. Give it to the Lord. And do whatever it takes. It's real simple. And here's the other thing. Be willing to accept the consequences. Be willing to accept the consequences. Because the consequences actually work for you. If your eyes are on the Lord and you really have humbled yourself, consequences will work for you and not against you. I didn't say they would feel good. Do you ever notice that a lot of things that don't feel good are actually good for you? Do you ever eat food that you didn't like but you knew it was good for you? Man, my wife can't get near my protein drinks. She's like, oh my God. She'll come in the house and know, you just made one of those drinks. She can smell it in the house. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Verse three. But they're good for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it in verse 3. Now by this we know that we know him if we what? Keep his commandments. His commandments is law. His words are law. His requests. If we keep his requests. He who says I know him and does not keep his requests or commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly the love of God is perfected in him, by this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to also, he himself ought to uh, also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the truth and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother or resents his brother or sister is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Wow. He who keeps his words of life will have life. Amen. 
It's an area where you are obeying and practicing. We are submitting and willing to make humble adjustments of forgiveness, cutting loose of resentment, willing to make a humble adjustment of consistency, forsaken not to assemble, worship, decree. There's a, there's a routine God gives you. Every one of us, he gives us a routine to be consistent in. When people come into our discipleship homes, what the first thing they're doing is learning a routine. That routine will bring to discipline. Why? Because discipline will lead to relationship with the Lord, and that relationship will lead to a love affair. To where you're no longer doing the things because you have to, you're doing the things because you want to. But God builds roots, I mean, uh, routines in each, in each. So just that routine alone will begin to be able to transfer to other routines. So we must maintain these routines. Look, at when you first learned how to drive, there was a certain routine that you did. You did a check when you went in a car and so forth and whatever. And now that routine that you learned how to drive, once you learned all the laws and the rules and where all the police hide out, You have a routine. So you, no matter what car you're driving, you know what routine's up. Amen? Okay. A little here. Second Kings 20. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, happy day. Second Kings 20. And then one more scripture. Verse 1. Oh, first Kings. Is everybody there? Speak this, please. 2 Kings 20 and verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Maz, went to him and said, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. That's a nice message. <laughs> I'm glad he's not my doctor. <laughs> But it was truth. Amen? He said, set it in order. You're going to die, dude. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and he prayed to the Lord, saying, remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Did he become humble? Yes, he made a very large, humble adjustment, being a king. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, leader of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add to your days 15 years, and I will deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend the city of my, for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. So we see this was a humble adjustment. He wept bitterly. And God healed him. Gave him 15 more years. 15 more years. How many of y'all know that you can still have a sickness and still live 15 more years? <laughs> Does everybody understand that? <laughs> because of a humble adjustment. <laughs> There's more opportunities. God always brings opportunities for more humble adjustments. 
But the other thing was, is he, he stood with him and he defeated the attacks of the enemy because of the humble adjustment. Let's close at Daniel 10. What humble... So again, we're going to go back on this way. Right? Are you ready? So when you say, if the Lord wills, what you're willing to do is make a... You're willing to make a humble adjustment. Amen? That's exactly what it means. If the Lord wills, I'll make... Then I can, I'm willing to make a humble adjustment. But if the Lord is not willing to do something in an area, then you wait. Verse 10. Let's speak it. And suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not, be, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand, you set, do you come in here to set your heart to understand? And humble yourself before your God. A lot of people have false humility, humble themselves before men. There's a lot of religions. Man, I'm telling you, when I was in Cambodia, those uh, Buddhist priests, look, they, they seem very humble. And pro the problem is there's false humility. Because they worship idols. That's called pride and stupidity. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourselves, your, yourself, you humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Somebody, I want your prayers answered quick, man. And that's what he says. But this isn't a one. See, people expect things to happen immediately because they, they humbled themselves once. Oh, man, I've humbled myself for a week now. Gosh, I was good all weekend. Something ought to happen. Yeah, you're going to get another opportunity for a humble adjustment. Set your heart to understand with humility, with full submission. Humble yourself is denying yourself. Hmm. Yeah. You'll get answers when you choose to understand and humble yourself. Amen? Amen. Make the humble adjustment today in everything, no matter what it is. You know what? It's an opportunity to show him. I did not get freed and delivered. He gave me a choice. He said, guy, you want to get off drugs and alcohol or you want a new life? And I realized I tried to get off of drugs and alcohol, but I didn't go after a new life. And it wasn't until I made the decision that I wanted a new life. And I said, I want a new life. And you know what he said? Show me. Amen. In other words, he was giving me an opportunity for a humble adjustment. <laughs> then I got freed. Freedom is by maintaining humble adjustments. Amen? Amen. It's where you full cooperate. Why? Because you no longer live for yourself anymore. You live for him. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. Let the words that were released today be absorbed, eaten, digested, understood, and put into practice. And we may walk a life of freedom, truth, power, righteousness, and a life that is pleasing to you. Taking the advantage of every opportunity for a humble adjustment for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.